Hello everyone, Nick here with Scott and Dickie again. Today's tech video is going to be talking about the oil system for your Gen 5 and Gen 6 big block Chevy. Now, we always do videos about small blocks or of course mostly the LS or LT platform because that's the hottest thing on the streets these days. But the old Mark IV and of course today Gen 5 and Gen 6 big blocks are still very popular. Of course naturally for the guys that are restoring you know an old Chevelle, a Camaro or a Corvette or like the guys in our race shop pumping out well over 2,000 horsepower and some custom builds with boost. Today though is to help out some of you guys that have grabbed a 91 or newer 454 or 502 out of a boat or a pickup truck and you're using it in a swap, you're using it in a classic car and you're trying to figure out an oil issue and I bet I know why. So let's dive right in. Now this is if you were crawling underneath your vehicle where the oil filter is. You know, here's your bell housing, your transmission, you know, that's the front of the car. And right here is the pad where your oil filter screws on. This would be if your oil filter was taken off. Now, what you're gonna notice is there's an area where the oil comes out. It should be a weird oval shaped hole maybe kind of coming in at an angle. That's what actually feeds the oil from your oil pump and your oil filter. Then of course, the return out of your oil filter is in the center. And you might see a little valve in there. That looks a little something like this metal piece here. It looks like a thimble. Go a little bit about that here in a second. Then you might see another valve in another hole. It's right next to this blue one here. It's a perfect circle hole right there. And of course, you got a couple more here on the pan rail. This is where your oil pan would be mounted right here. You got two here. And of course these are 3 8 NPT fittings. But I bet you're seeing some low oil pressure at idle. Something like 5, 10, maybe 15 PSI. Especially when it warms up. Maybe after you did a pull you saw that gauge. <gasps> you freak out. You're trying to figure out what happened. Well, these engines came from the factory with these little valves installed dead center here where the oil filter screws on and of course installed here right next to where the oil inlet is. If you were running to run one of these engines without an oil cooler because that's where these two uh, 3 8 MPT ports come in, you plug these off. You can get an Allen head plug, hex head, it doesn't matter. Just make sure it's the 3 8 NPT. Put some thread sealant on it, clean it up, install those in, hand torque them, you'll be fine. You'll remove this valve from the center of the oil filter. Most people remove these little valves with a screwdriver, a pair of pliers. We've actually noticed the easiest way is to find the right size drill bit to bite on the inside of this hole here. If I remember correctly, I want to say it's a 3 8 drill bit, but you'll kind of have to test and find out. Most people just do it with their hands. They use the drill bit to kind of bite into the metal and grab a pair of pliers and pull them out. They're pressed in, but they aren't pressed in that hard. So don't do any damage, but you should be able to get one of these out. I bet we get 10 phone calls a week about this. This is a very common thing that happens for all you guys that pulled a truck engine and you cammed it, you threw it in a Nova, you're taking it down the track and you're seeing an oil pressure gauge and you think Autometer might have sold you a bunk gauge. It's not the case. What happens is when this had an oil cooler on it, these pressure valves kind of measured a differential. Uh, they were a low pressure valve too. The one I have in my hand here happens to be a 30 PSI. These are 11 PSI. You'll leave the one in right here. This red one right here, you'll leave in there. You'll take out the one here in the center. That creates a redundancy in the oil system where there's a whole bunch of right hand turns before it finally goes down and feeds the rest of the engine. And that's all we're doing. We're taking that out to solve this issue. I really hope this explained a little bit going on here. There was a lot of discussions online about this, and of course a lot of phone calls like I've said, and it makes people panic when they see that low oil pressure. The thing is, is that they are designed to run like that. So don't freak out just yet. Don't think that you trashed an engine. Do a little inspection if you think you might have, but for the most part, we never really hear about any true damage that came from this. It's mostly just people panicking at a low oil PSI number they see on a gauge. So I hope you're able to answer some questions. We really hope you stop by next week for one of our tech videos. Again, this idea came from people like yourself. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns, anything like that, we love doing these videos. We love answering your questions. Let us know in the comments below on YouTube or Facebook. We do read through the comments. We do try to answer questions and whatnot. Give us a like and subscribe. And of course, like I said, please share our video so we can help out everybody here in the hot rodding world. See you guys next week. Thanks for stopping by.